Okay, hello everyone. My name is Francesca Guteri from Goethe University Frankfurt and uh, I have the pleasure in this school to serve as instructor for the non-zero temperature and density lattice QCD part. Therefore, I'd like to start with an introduction and motivation to this topic in order to set the stage. So first thing to discuss, I believe, is uh, where can we find in nature hot and dense and uh, even magnetized states of strongly interacting matter. We are particularly interested in those states of matter which lie at the edge between uh, the hadronic phase, which is a phase in which quarks and gluons that are the elementary degrees of freedom of QCD are confined within hadrons, and a phase which is known as the quark-gluon plasma phase, where they instead, as the name says, form a plasma. Now, one possibility to uh, observe uh, such a state of uh, strong interacting matter is to take a huge step back in time all the way to the first few microseconds of our universe's evolution when the universe was hot and rather dilute um, and strongly magnetized as well. It was a primordial cosmic soup with this uh, kind of characteristics. Another possibility is to go to the microscopic distance scales over which we uh, replicate and reproduce the Big Bang in its tiny version called the Small Bang, where heavy ion collision experiments happens, and look at the evolution of the fireball which is created in the collision of heavy nuclei at very hot temperatures and about the nuclear saturation density. This is where the strongest magnetic fields on Earth are also generated. Now, back to cosmos, there is another possibility, uh, which is looking at violent astronomical events, such as binary neutron star mergers. Uh, there, slightly smaller temperatures are reached, but density, densities which go up to twice nuclear saturation density and also rather intense magnetic fields. And another possibility is also to look at the interior composition of those stellar objects, the neutron stars, which are characterized by even smaller temperatures, but that are extremely dense and particularly neutron dense objects and also magnetized objects. Now, what I would like to try and convince you uh, in the course of this um, lecture is that the interpretation of these phenomena, which are apparently very different and which certainly takes place on very different time and space scales, they all rely entirely on our fundamental understanding of QCD and therefore our understanding of QCD is the key to the interpretation of those kind of phenomena, both on microscopic and on macroscopic scales. Now, for a moment, we do set the magnetic fields aside and we think about temperature and density. Uh, in particular, if we do that, we realize that all the um, situations, physical situations or objects that I have mentioned, um, commenting on the first transparency, actually sit into the sketch of the QCD phase diagram that I have at the center of this uh, slide. This is the QCD phase diagram in the parameter space, or I should rather say uh, plane mostly, of the temperature and um, the net baryon density, which measures the excess of matter over antimatter. There is also like an arrow pointing in a third direction, which would be the direction of the isospin density, where we instead measure the excess of neutrons over protons. This QCD phase diagram is the focus of a very, very large experimental and observational campaigns. Um, in particular, there are ongoing experiments and uh, experiments that are planned for the future. So on the experimental side, when, it, when we want to talk about heavy ion collisions, um, there are experiments which are ongoing or they are planned for the near futures at very many facilities in the world. I'm just mentioning here five of them. And when it comes to observational astronomy, there are interferometers that measure the gravitational wave signals and telescopes that are meant to explore the neutron star interior composition and the origin and evolution of cosmic magnetic fields. With this, uh, I want to tell you that uh, there is um, a really intense experimental and observational activity that is also paralleled by uh, the effort of the theory community, which is developing and carrying out a parallel research plan 
aiming at explaining, predicting and anticipating the results of these experiments and of these observations just by improving our fundamental knowledge of QCD. And having discussed our motivations for studying the QCD phase diagram, of course you need to know what is the tool that we are going to employ in order to access, in particular, the non-perturbative regime of QCD. Uh, we said we would like to look at strongly interacting matter where a phase transition occurs, that is an intrinsically non-perturbative phenomenon. On top, um, whenever we are on a hadronic scale, we know that the coupling is uh, so strong that um, a perturbative expansion breaks down. And therefore, the choice is uh, lattice QCD, which is also the main topic of the school. So you know by now, because we have attended the introductory class, that in lattice QCD the theory is quantized in the path integral approach, and this leads to integral expressions uh, of the sort of those that I have written down on the slides. And these are expression for expressions for the expectation value, for example, of a generic observable O in QCD with uh, a given nf number of mass degenerate quark species. To make these integrals mathematically well-defined and stochastically computable, then the theory needs to also be discretized in a gauge invariant manner, as Wilson taught us, on a four-dimensional Euclidean toroidal lattice. This results in a regularization, because introducing a lattice spacings means that there also is a momentum cutoff. Um, it also results on like having fermionic fields that leave on the sides of the lattices while the gauge fields realize gauge invariantly the connection over the lattice, as you have surely learned. Um, and in the attainment of the continuum physical results demands that the thermodynamic and the continuum limits are both uh, taken first. In this way, through the lattice, we have a rigorous definition of QCD and, uh, as you also know by now, a computational tool that uh, allows us to solve a very highly dimensional uh, order 10 to the 9 dimensional integrals by employing high performance computing clusters, which um, allow us to provide phenomenologists and experimentalists with numerical theory input. We discussed a motivation and we have discussed the tool that we are going to employ to study QCD matter under extreme conditions. Um, I just want to mention here that uh, magnetic fields are not uh, the topic of this part of the class. So by QCD matter under extreme conditions, I now mean under extreme conditions in terms of temperature, high, temp high temperature, or pressure. And this combined um, certainly will at some point lead us from the hadronic phase, where you have quarks and gluons confined within hadronic structures, to the quark gluon plasma phase. And the pressure in particular is encoded in densities. So there will be densities that are measuring the overall excess of some kind of matter over some other kind of matter or antimatter. In particular, we can um, have non-zero isospin density as on one of the axes of the phase diagram. Mm. And this is something which is a density which is describing an asymmetry between the densities of up and down quarks, which in turn get in turns get reflected into an asymmetry of in the density of protons over the density of neutrons, and therefore an asymmetry is between the densities of positively charged pions and negatively charged pions, and I could continue, of course. Um, another density which is interesting to us is uh, non-zero baryon density where instead we have somehow an excess of matter, strongly interacting matter, over strongly interacting antimatter, and therefore an asymmetry in terms of the densities of, for example, protons and antiprotons. All right, then we, uh, it looks like we can go ahead and map out the QCD phase diagram and study the thermodynamics of QCD uh, in exactly that sketch that I uh, showed to you at the beginning as a motivation. However, unfortunately, there is a caveat, and this caveat goes under the name of complex action or sign problem. This holds that after we trade the densities for the corresponding chemical potentials in a grand canonical ensemble formulation, and we pick a basis for our simulations like the basis of chemical potentials that I have um, that I am displaying 
on the slide for the two dynamical light up and down quarks and the dynamical heavier strange quark while all heavier quarks are neglected as they contribute less at the temperatures and densities at which we are interested. Um, only the setup with non-zero isospin density is actually suitable for direct lattice calculation while the setup at non-zero baryon density is not. So combining lattice simulations and techniques that we are going to learn about in the second part of this class, like Taylor expansion or reweighting techniques, uh, it is actually true that we can use uh, a lattice approach with standard Monte Carlo sampling to, um, to investigate and find results in a small portion of the non-zero baryon density phase diagram, which is uh, also highlighted in the sketch. Um, but important features, like for example the existence of this critical endpoint that is conjectured, um, are out of reach of lattice investigations at uh, the moment, and they cannot be confirmed. Okay, so since it is so important and it prevents us from uh, being able to simulate um, strongly interacting matter where we would like to, let me give you an intuition about what the sign problem is before we get back to uh, specifically this subject for the non-zero density part of the course. So what all we have to do is we consider again QCD with NF um, flavors of the generate mass quarks. And here I am rewriting on the slide the expectation value for a generic observable. But after I have already integrated out the fermionic degrees of freedom analytically, which is what brings the NF power of the determinant in um, basically the expression that you can put together by setting aside the R measure and the observable that you are interested in. Why am I setting this aside? Because the strategy in lattice QCD is to stochastically evaluate um, this type of integrals with uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods um, through which we generate ensembles of gauge fields uh, that in this formula are uh, indicated by A. Um, and this we do according to a probability distribution function, which is what I have collected apart from the observable in the same integral expression. Okay, so now the problem is that this, what we need is that this object is a well-defined probability distribution function. And for that to be true, it has to be real and positive. Clear from a very simple one-dimensional example where we would like to integrate a function f of x, so a function of a single variable, over some given interval, for example, from a to b. Um, therefore, if we want to do this stochastically and we want to employ important sampling, what we do is we factorize the integrand into two parts. One of the two parts has to be as flat as possible over the integration um, interval, and the other part has to be a well-defined probability distribution function for drawing the abscissa at which we then sample the other factor in the integrand according to the Monte Carlo integration theorem. And this is going to give us a very more efficiently uh, a measure of what the integral or the area below the curve is. Uh, and this works much better than just drawing random samples of the value of the function at uh, uniformly randomly distributed values for the abscissa. All right, and this is uh, doable, it works very well, unless the function you have to calculate the area below of is uh, not well behaved as the function we were looking at previously. So now just imagine you take a complex function uh, whose real and imaginary parts are oscillating um, quite fast, like in the red curve, and imagining, Im imagine having to adopt the same kind of strategy. Then you would end up being uh, not so much efficient because you need exact explicit cancellations in order to find out the area below this curve. And this is something that standard important sampling uh, cannot do easily for you. All right, so now that you have an intuition of what this um, sign uh, problem is, um, the, the thing I would like to tell you is that uh, still we can explore interesting phases in various QCD phase diagrams. 
So for as severe the limitation of the sign problem might look, there is still a great deal of interesting and phenomenologically relevant physics that we can learn uh, from studying lattice simulations in sign problem free setups or for, from trying to extend uh, into sign problem affected region uh, thanks to reweighting or Taylor expansion, which we will discuss uh, in coming classes, um, our methods that we normally employ at mu equals zero. So here I have on the slide some of the many phase diagrams and therefore phases of QCD. Uh, the first is the same sketch uh, you saw before with the temperature and the um, baryon chemical potential. You can look at uh, the phase diagram of QCD in the temperature versus isospin chemical potential plane. One can switch back on the magnetic fields and also this uh, other phase diagram has been studied in the plane of temperature and magnetic fields. And then there is a third one, uh, which uh, now has three axes. The temperature, the chemical potential, which is now the baryon or quark chemical potential. Please keep in mind that I can use these two things interchangeably because they are just related by a factor of three. Um, the quark and the baryon chemical potential, and the axis that represents the um, value of the mass of the two light flavors in your theory. And this is also a phase diagram of uh, QCD which uh, is being studied. So let's see what are the main features of all of them. In the first case, we uh, have a critical point conjectured, which is unfortunately out of reach for lattice simulations and the color superconducting phase which would be very interesting to explore but unfortunately it is uh, at uh, low temperature and high values of the baryon chemical potential and this is the um, place where the sign problem becomes more and more severe um, and uh, then we have the T temperature versus isospin chemical potential where the interesting uh, thing is that you have um, a Bose-Einstein condensate phase where pions condensed. We will get back to this as well. And also the incognita of whether uh, the lattice simulations are able to uh, figure out the existence of a uh, superconducting bardeen cooper schrieffer phase, which has also been conjectured on the basis of uh, some perturbation theory studies. And there is a critical endpoint also in the temperature versus magnetic field um, phase diagram. This has been uh, already investigated with lattice techniques. And in the last, uh, more complicated three dimensional phase diagram that I mentioned to you already, um, there are um, two things I want to mention. There is periodicity, this helps because then you also only have to look into some slice of this phase diagram. And you might be wondering at this point, why at all did we have the third axis with the masses of the light flavors? Why at all we consider this uh, mass dependence and we consider changing the microscopic parameters of the theory rather than just the thermodynamic parameters of the theory? Um, well, we do that because uh, we will see that non-zero temperature can be varied at will, um, that non-zero density is accessible whenever the fermionic determinant is real and positive, but there is another obstruction in our lattice investigations of the phase diagram, and this comes from the fact that uh, at least uh, with the uh, solvers which are um, most commonly used in the community, the simulation cost is growing when you uh, decrease the quark masses. Um, so this triggers the question, what if we changed the quark masses too? That is um, an interesting one, because first of all, uh, based on what I just said, there are cost benefits uh, from going uh, towards larger masses, but also because this phase diagram somehow becomes more critical in the chiral limit. And uh, there we have possibilities for controlled extrapolations towards uh, critical points that lie in the chiral limit uh, plane of the phase diagram. Okay, so here is a summary for you for the first uh, part of the class. There are many open questions, uh, among which uh, we would like to know which phases exist in strong interaction matter um, and uh, confirm the existence of phases that have been conjectured based on, uh, for example, perturbation theory. Um, what is the nature of the transitions between these uh, various phases? 
whether or not the critical endpoint exists in the temperature versus baryon chemical potential plane and uh, whether this is accessible experimentally, uh, whether there is a first order phase transition at uh, very small non-zero values of the quark masses when you, for example, look at a symmetric state where you have zero chemical potential of any sort. And what are the thermodynamic properties of hot and dense QCD matter? So going beyond the phase diagram and understanding the phases to understanding actually the behavior of this thermodynamic system and measuring the equation of state and all connected quantities. Why lattice QCD? Because we focus on not perturbative aspects. Um, most of all, we are interested in phase transitions and property equilibrium properties um, close to these phase transitions. Um, and also non-perturbative observables in the lattice QCD approach have the advantage that they can be calculated with controlled, systematically improvable uncertainties coming from um, effects that we can very well control in a lattice simulations, simulation. And uh, yeah, there is though the issue that the sign problem is a serious obstruction, but we will discuss several methods that have been uh, proposed in order to circumvent it in the second part of this class. All right, then it's probably time to tell you what is the plan for the rest of this course. We will start by focusing on QCD at non-zero temperature only, so zero density or zero chemical potential. Uh, there we will discuss a little bit about the theory and the background, what are the relevant symmetries and the critical phenomena that we expect to witness. And then I will discuss with you some applications in this domain, in particular, how do we go about mapping out the phase diagram, how do we go about measuring the equation of state, looking at the thermodynamics of this kind of system, and then we will discuss also screening masses as well as spectral functions. Um, afterwards, we will move on to the non-zero density part of the course. Also in that case, there will be some uh, introduction of the basic uh, theory, um, and some applications will be discussed in setups which are either dense but sign problem free, such as the non-zero isospin density setup that I have already mentioned, or setups which are baryon dense. And in that case, they can also be sign problem free if you, for example, consider imaginary values of the chemical potential, as you do as a starting point for an analytic continuation. And then more uh, techniques which were meant or are meant to circumvent the sign problem, which are in particular reweighting and Taylor expansion.